take what you need, leave what you can. How Toronto Network is transforming the way we think about food insecurity. Hey, this is Venominous, and thank you for joining me. So, here we have Community Fridges Toronto is a volunteer-run network of public fridges stocked with fresh, free food for anyone who needs it. It's a meeting place, a lifeline, and a symbol of hope for how Toronto Torontonians can create a kinder city. Posted on March 7th, 2021. So let's just look at this cover photo here. This is one of their painted up fridges. All of them are painted. And um, here we have the hands throwing up what is a rainbow of produce. And their little slogan, take what you need, leave what you can. Of course, you got the gloved hands because you're PPE. And uh, if you notice this, these common, it's common to see the hand symbols here, like these hands specifically. You see them a lot in the programming. I don't know what you would call these hands. Hope hands. Something like that. But interestingly enough, if uh, you caught my video covering the Seattle Space Needle during their little CGI show there, you also have, uh, if the image ever pops up, no? Oh, uh, here we go. We have the hands. I think it's it gives people a false sense of caring. It's been a tactic that I've seen a lot from New World Order organizations. Sorry, my internet's a little slow. I'm uploading a video right now. Anyways. So. A lifeline, a meeting place, a sanctuary. Those are the words that have been used to describe the impact of Community Fridges Toronto. A volunteer-run network of public fridges stocked with fresh food, free food, or with fresh free food for anyone who needs it. And the motto... Take what you need, leave it again. In less than a year, seven CFTO fridges have popped up across the city, from Leslieville to Parkdale to East York. The goal is simple, to assist those who have fallen on hard times, providing mutual aid, not charity. Sounds all nice, right? Look at the characters that are involved in this. Uh, okay, so, I mean, it's an interesting photo for the character here, Jal Jalil Bakhari, the CFTO founder. What inspired you to start CFTO? I live across from Alexander Park, or Alexandra Park. I watched as the number of unhoused residents doubled and then tripled. I saw that a friend in Brooklyn had started a community fridge. I mentioned to her that I was hoping to see something like that in Toronto, and she asked me, why am I waiting for someone else to do it? She reminded me that the mutual aid relies on everyone coming together. Mm. So I wouldn't be alone when things started rolling if people were given the room to step up to care for the community. So we'll move on. Oh, oh. Well then, nice hat. This is Naveen Sedki. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, more black and white. Yeah. Oh. Those are some cold dead eyes. Mm hmm. Is that an army fatigue there? Mm 
Mm -hmm. Oh, dear lord. <laughs> More cold, dead eyes. <laughs> it's, it's very interesting, these photos, because they're very... What's How would you say? Communist in their style? No one's smiling, for one thing. You think you would have some color, wouldn't you? If you were doing something that's nice for people. But no, this is this is textbook commie photography here. It's no smiles, black and white drab. You especially got the hat here. The pin I can't quite make out. So anyways, yes. Here is... the map here got seven locations Let's see is there any comments here no all right so i wanted to show you the instagram All right, here is the Instagram. No DM inquiries, please. Take what you need, leave what you can. Let's take a look at this photo here. It's just taking a little while to open. Okay, come on. There we go. Ah, it's so slow right now. Oh, here we go. This is old school general store. Proudly displaying all the all their pretty little flags here. This is one of the stores that supports CFTO, I assume. Anyways, you got your flags, all your New World Order grassroots. Take me back. Where was it? There was something. Oh, here we go. Here's one of their posters. We've got the rainbow, of course. Lightning bolts, rain. And your 33, just the way it was written. All right, get me out of there. All right, slow. Okay, what else we got? Lots of repetition of their saying, take what you need, leave what you can. There is something else here, where is it? Why am I not finding it?
There's a Valentine's Day card. I choose cho choose community. Mm hmm. Community. Communist. Wait. I'm just getting out of there now. So. Hold on a minute. Before I start this. It's about to play a second. Pause it. Come on. Anyways. These people are so current, concerned about feud, feud, food security. Good morning, farm talk. Why aren't they concerned about, say, I don't know, food production? Do they even know where food comes from? Take a look at this guy. Um, I guess I'm going on a little rant here this morning because I'm kind of pissed off about what I heard yesterday. And it's an executive order called 30 by 30. And basically what, it, what it's doing or what, what President Biden wants to do is take 30% um, of the nation's land and water away from privately owned or local and state owned governments and basically take it away from us for our use and turn it into conservation um, to battle climate change. And, um, I guess it really disturbs me, and I think it's something that we probably need to be following pretty close, because I don't really want to give up 30% of my land, especially to Biden. But uh, we're having our first meeting here in Nebraska, March 9th at Valentine, and I'll try to get that information uploaded here. Yeah, but that's in the U.S., but a lot of U.S. is produ produce and uh, even meat does end up in Canada. Canada, uh, I believe, imports like 80% of its produce. It's pretty bad. I don't know. We could grow a lot more food here, but we don't. That might that number might be different now with the way things are. I mean, almost guaranteed that is the case. But uh, if that was the case before, it was it was 80%. Let's move on to. Not this. Uh, oh, what that guy was talking about, the 30 by 30. That's not just in the U.S. There's been a trend within um, countries. Here, we'll, well, once it loads. This was from September of 2020. Boris Johnson pledges to protect 30% of UK's land by 2030 to support the recovery of nature. Boris Johnson is promising to protect 30% protect 30 of the UK's land by 2030 under government plans to support the recovery, recovery of nature. The Prime Minister will make the pledge at a virtual United Nations event on Monday where he will uh, warn that countries must act to reverse biodiversity loss. Mr. Johnson commits, Johnson's commitments will see the additional 400,000 hectares of land in England, equivalent to the size of the Lake District and South Downs National Parks combined, being protected for the next decade. The environment is a devolved matter. The government has said it will work with Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, as well as landowners to increase the size of protected land across the UK. Prime Minister will sign the Leaders' Pledge for Nature at the UN event on Monday, agreeing to, to, prior to, prior to prior, prioritize, 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 there we go, I got it, marine recovery from coronavirus, deliver ambitious biodiversity targets, and increase financing for nature among other commi commitments. He will say, we must turn these words into action and use them to build momentum, to agree ambitious goals and binding targets. We must act now, right now. We cannot afford dither and delay because di biodiversity loss is happening today and is happening at a frightening rate. 
Uh, left unchecked, the consequences will be, will be ca catastrophic for us all. Extinction is forever, so our action must be immediate. Ah, uh, yes, the veiled threat of extinction. Anyways. WF UK Chief Executive Tanya Steele said, This announcement is a welcome step, but it must be backed up by urgent ambition, including strong legislation to avoid damaging trade deals and to stop the food we eat from destroying the environment here and abroad. Only then can we meet our climate targets, put nature on the path to recovery, and set our sights on global leadership in COP26. Oh, man. Now, look, there it is. This is why the 30 by 30 promise must now be put into domestic law a part, as part of a suit of nature, or sorry, suit of goals to restore the, the abundance and the divert, divers, ah, diversity of our wildlife in every country in the UK. Craig Bennett, um, chief executive of the Wildlife Trust's said it was a good start, but that more action was needed on the ground to deliver the ambition set out by Prime Minister and to put nature into recovery. That's a good start. <laughs> That's not enough, man. 30%? Nope, that's just a start. It's freaking insane. And it um, isn't really that surprising. I mean, I've, I've seen these before. Here was the convert half of UK farmland to nature, or just top scientist. I uh, had written about this before. Half of the nation's farmland needs to be transformed into woodlands and natural habitat to fight the climate, climate crisis and restore wildlife, according to a former chief scientific advisor to the UK government. So this was 2019, December 31st, so... Uh, Professor Sir Ian Boyd such said such a change could mean about the amount of cattle and sheep would fall by 90%, with farmers instead being paid for storing carbon dioxide, helping f prevent floods and providing beautiful landscapes where people could boost their health and well-being. Yeah, how are you going to do that when there's no food? Uh, Boyd said the public was subsidizing the livestock industry to produce huge environmental damage. The professor spent seven years at the Department for Environment, Food, and Rural Affairs before stepping down in August. Half of farmland, mostly upland and pasture, produces just 20% of the UK's food and we better for you, better for used other public goods, he said. Uh, Boyd, who became vegetarian during his time in DEFRA, Defra said uh, farmers will, were potentially sitting on a gold mine in terms of payments they could receive for growing trees and removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. He said, we need a large radical transformation, and we need to do it quickly. In the next decade, you can, trick, you can tick an immense number of boxes simulta simultaneously. Farmers argue that uplands and pasture where livestock are reared cannot be used to grow crops. But Boyd said it would be much better to store carbon in water, grow trees, and make the land available for everyone to improve their health and well welfare. He said the 20% food reduction loss by converting half of farmland could be made up by the development of vertical farms, where food is produced indoors and controlled in more efficient conditions, because outdoors in the sun is not... Efficient at all, of course. Why why use natural natural sunlight or the water from rain? That that would be that's so inefficient. Boyd said, I know these are big companies looking at how to really scale this up. Um all right. So much more to read here. A little bit more just happened uh, yeah okay 
series of studies have concluded that people in rich nations need to eat much less meat to tackle the climate change emergency and improve their health. Well, Bill Gates said that they need to convert all the way to synthetic meat. They'll just have to get used to the taste. Most of the livestock production in the UK is unprofitable without pub public subsidy, said Boyd. The public are subsidizing the production of livestock to produce huge environmental damages, all the way from greenhouse, ga greenhouse gas emissions to water pollution. Why should we continue to do that? It's not sensible. If anybody asks me if there is one thing I can do to help save the planet, what would it be? I would say just eat a lot less meat. and easy is It's the easiest thing to do. I've done it. People could reduce the meat by the meat they eat by 90% and have a perfectly balanced diet, Boyd said. Freeing up 50% of the land would would probably result in a reduction in the amount of livestock uh, by the by about that amount because it would be mostly livestock land we would be taking out of production. Farmers should be paid for changing the way Land is used, he said. Current subsidies are largely based on the amount of land owned, but the government has pledged it will move to a system based on public money for public goods. After the UK leaves the EU subsidy regime, farmland covers 70% 70 70 of the UK, meaning that converting half to woodlands and parks would create new landscapes across a third of the country. In May, a report from, from Rewilding Britain called for a quarter of the nation to be returned to natural habitat. The National Farmers Union recently published its plan to end the climate heating emissions from agriculture by 2040. It said this would be done without cutting beef production or converting large areas of farmland and forest. It said the NFU said 75% of the UK's agricultural emissions could be offset by growing plant fuel for power stations, and then capturing and burying the carbon dioxide. Uh, responding to Boyd's proposal, Guy Smith, the NFU's deputy president, said urgent action is needed to tackle the climate emergency. British farmers, for example, the beef produced in Britain is already 2.5 times more efficient than the global average, and they are committed to doing even more. However, we will not halt climate change by curbing sustainable British productions uh, and exporting it to countries which may not have the same climate ambition as we do here. Boyd said this proposal is not about being negative about farmers, it's about being positive about their futures and helping them to adapt and continue providing support for society, but in different ways from the past. Well, they certainly won't be feeding society if they uh, go along with your plan there. Uh, is this the one I want? Uh, no, hold on. Oh, great. Hmm. Is that not going to load? Ah. Canada, Britain, EU pledges to protect 30% of land... C by 2030 to stop catastrophic biodiversity loss. This was also September 2020. It was September 28, 2020. Updated September 29, so it was around the same time as the Boris thing. And it's just going to say the same stuff. But this one at least points out that several countries all right environment ah here we go here's another one this is from November 30th 2020 environment to benefit from biggest farm farming shakeup in 50 years 1.6 billion subsidies for farming land in England to end, with funds going to improve nature. 
wildlife, nature, and the climate will benefit from the biggest shakeup in farming policy in England for 50 years, according to government plans. 1.6 billion subsidy farmers receive every year for simply owning and or renting land will be phased out by 2028, with the funds used instead to pay them to restore wild habitats, create new woodlands, boost soils, and cut pesticide use. Wealthiest farmers, those receiving annual payments over 150,000 pounds a year, will face the sharpest cuts starting with 25% in 2021. Those receiving less than 30,000 will see a 5% cut next year. Some of the biggest recipients of the ex existing scheme have been the Duke of Westminster, uh, the inventor Sir James Dyson, racehorse owner Prince Khalid bin Abdullah Al Saud, and the Queen. Farmers will also get grants to improve productivity and animal welfare, including new robotic equipment. Oh joy! The goal of the plan is that farmers will, within seven years, be producing healthy and profitable food in a sustainable way and without best subsidies. The Environment Secretary, George Eustace, uh, acknowledged the damage done to the environment by industrial farming since the 1960s and said the new plans would deliver for nature and help fight the climate crisis. Farming occupies 7% of England and the, is the biggest driver of biodiversity loss and produces significant greenhouse gas emissions and water pollution. And if I just keep reading this, this is going to be the same nonsense. You get the point there. I also uh, wrote this article myself mm, last year. No, not last year. year before that. Two years ago. This was um, CPAWS wants 50% of Canada locked up in conservation. And... Uh, I just want, I had pointed out that most of Canada isn't even populated. If you uh, look at the general concentration of the entire population of Canada, it's all within the border areas. You got all this stuff up here untouched. Plenty of uh, trees. Plenty of nature. Uh, in Alberta, my province, I believe it's 75% of habitat untouched. That includes, even with the, the tar sands, the biggest oil, uh, the, the tar sands, the biggest uh, oil thingy. <laughs> so I don't know the in like the world, I don't know. It's like you can see it from space. That's how big it is. Still, 75% of the province is untouched. So there you go. Uh, population growth. Canada has one of the fastest growth rates of any G8 nation. Yeah, right. Growing faster than any, many other industry countries. Canada's population. Oh yeah, that's right. Population growth through immigration, not through um, you know, birth. Uh, so I've surpassed 35 million. I believe we're more like closer to 38 million now. Uh, which represents, I mean, that's what they tell us, right? 1.2% increase in one year and a growth that's higher in the Western provinces of the country. And uh, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. It's estimated that the predictable growth will continue. And Canada may have 45 million residents by... 2056, although it is expected to fall off a bit due to declines in natural population increases, increases that means natural birth. Uh, it's also predicted that deaths will outpace births by 2030. Fantastic. Which means immigration will become the only growth factor for the country. Are you serious? The only growth factor for the country? How do they know this? How do they know this? Maybe because there's a plan involved? I mean, the immigration minister for Canada, whatever his name is, he is a immigrant himself. Um, he said that 
the very much he said the same thing, but he said by 2036, 100 percent of Canada's growth would be through immigration. So he doesn't think there's going to be birth anymore. This simple, I remember where I got this link. It's a. It's probably uh, I think it's from Canadian statistics site. I probably have it linked up somewhere. But regardless, it says it there as well. Oh man, maybe it has something to do with this uh, <laughs> current crisis and the solutions to the crisis. Maybe a little jabby jab might uh, be the reason. We'll have to find out. So Canada needs to triple the amount of protected land and water to tackle natural or nature's emergency report. Biodiversity is declining. Yeah, sure it is. Um, against the backdrop, track declines, the world's ecosystem species, yeah, yeah, yada, yada. And yeah, I have written a lot of articles regarding climate change and stuff. So the advocacy group says Canada shouldn't just stop at 30%. That it should commit to protecting half the country's land mass from development, including extractive industries like logging and oil and gas that at some point over this next century. Beyond committing to such a move at home, CPAS, um, the only nationwide charity dedicated to solely to protecting public land and water, says Canada, also should secure commitments from other countries to preserve 30% of inland territory. At, to at talks in China next year, the countries are sending represent representatives to a conference in Beijing in 2020 to decide on new preservation targets as part of the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity. And they did such thing, and it got the whole 30-30 plan going on now. How much forest does Canada have? So I wanted to show that we are heavily populated with forests. Canada has 347 million hectares of forest, which makes up 9% of the world's forests. 24% of the world's boreal forests are found within Canada's borders. Much of Canada's forest land is in remote, sparsely populated areas and is not under the same pressure to be cleared for agriculture or urban development as forests in many other countries. Canada has nearly 10 hectares of forest land per person, more than 17 times the world average. So, But, but by all means, protect half of it and force us into the megacities because climate change. Uh, yada yada, more propaganda. Another recent announcement committed federal money to buying at least 200,000 hectares of private land and fresh water in southern Canada where experts agree nature and wildlife face the greatest pressures. But even with the financial commitment and a promise to reach the 2020 goal, CPAWS maintains the 17% target is still woefully below what results of most scientific studies show are necessary to meet widespread conservation goals, such as maintaining viable populations of native species. Uh, man. There's an urgent need to act now, the group said, because since 1970, half of all monitored species in Canada have declined, of those half declined on average by more than 8%. Uh, the Avisky Group maintains bolstering protected 
areas would benefit will benefit nature and improve air quality, soil quality, pollination, seed dispersal, continued access to food and medicines, protection protection against extreme weather, coral reefs and mangrove swamps, protect against cyclones and tsunamis, and help with general health and well being. Here's the Wildlands Project, if you ever seen this before. This is a simulated reserve and corridor system protected biodiversity, a mandated, oops, what did I just do? Stop that. As mandated by the Convention of Biological Diversity, the Wildlands Project UN and US Man, US Man and Biosphere Program and various UN US heritage programs and NAFTA. Red. The red dot what red areas, core reserves and corridors, little to no human use. Yellow is buffer zones, highly regulated use. Normal use zones is this greenish color. Uh, a darker yellow color is border twenty one. La Paz sidebar agreement of NAFTA 124 mile wilder wild, wild international zone of cooperation or something or wide international and then we got a pinkish color which is Indian reser reservations uh, darker grayish color is military reservations cities are dots it's really not the most Clear photo here, and this is this is an old um, an old uh, piece of um, material from I believe it was the United Nations uh, Agenda 21. Whenever that was, you know, shortly after that was formed, this is one of their kind of goals that they set. Notice how very little we have of the normal use zones of cooperations. That's what would be, I guess, the populated areas of regular citizens. You only got little squares here and there. If you could see the dots, I think I see some dots. It's The picture is not great. But there's not many of them. That requires uh, a lot of concentrated cities and a severe reduction in population, I'd say. Wouldn't you agree? Anyways. And here's a bunch of NGO environmental groups. Are the attack dogs of the UN to push their conservation movements? And yeah, I think it was that the it's in this one. Uh, what did I want to show you here? America faces a hunger and nutrition crisis unlike any in this country has seen in generations. So this was the to do with the Rockefeller Institutes, uh, what do they call it? Uh, reset the table. It's a reset the table plan, which basically uh, has to do with having very little meat, of course. Uh, and a whole, oops. I accidentally hit refresh, didn't I? My bad. Basically, their plan is building these, um, communal feeding hubs and such pushing the equity and food is medicine. If food is medicine, but not the way they want to do it. 
Oh, here they first first say that 94% of deaths from, you know, what, among individuals with underlying conditions, the majority of which are diet-related. They, they actually said that before it came out by the CDC. CDC was later on, by like months, a month or two. So the, here's their shift plans. More integrated nutrition security system. So one is to strengthen the nutrition benefit program and ensure children and families are fed. Two, invest in public and private uh, funding and school food programs as anchors of community. There's your community. Community feeding. Expand food as med is food is medicine. When I hear community feeding, I think of the canteens in in uh, like the feeding halls in uh, 1984. I that's what I picture. I picture you know they have this one time they come and eat and it's a big cafeteria thing and they'll just bring people in. People won't have food in their homes. They won't be uh, they don't um, eat at home. They they come to the community hall and that's where they come and eat where they can be uh, fed their rations. And we see pop-ups like food halls. Just before the you-know-what happened, they were, uh, here's the food hall. These were these outdoor, kind of like food courts. These massive food court things outdoors. There was one here in Montreal. And they... They were still popping up, even with the whole crisis thing. They just have their PPP, PPE rules in place. And then uh, you could see uh, Boris pushing um, basically food rations here because he said, I was too fat, and that's why he caught what, you know, what supposedly he caught it and recovered but it was because he was too fat and um, there's too many adverts pushing food and with high fat sugar and salt and etc the document published today shows adults are eating 200 to 300 more calories a day than they need and when i saw that it made me think oh well that kind of makes me think that they're kind of hinting at possibly reducing calorie cal calorie allotments for people in, in the future you will only be able to eat this much you've reached your calorie limit uh here's tesco asking shoppers to weigh their food bins to cut uh, cut down on waste waste is going to be a big thing you're not going to be allowed to even drop a crumb without them finding out about it Here they're having food waste by 20, having the food waste amount by 2030. Uh, pandemic has made them value food more. Food waste an ambitious trial and aims to reduce 6.6 .6 million tons of mountain, ton mountain of food uh, thrown away by UK households. The UK's largest supermarket, Tesco, has linked up with the environmental Charity hubbub to run the six week experiment. So you got your six 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 there. Lockdowns have driven the dry, driven the biggest change in the nation's food habits. Experience shortages for the first time. China had launched a similar thing with their food waste program. Clean your plate. Uh, they also uh, banned uh, the mukbang videos that um, were on YouTube because they don't want to glorify gorging on food. So city, city to limit number of dishes served to diners, implementing a system where groups must order one less dish than the number of diners to maintain a sense of crisis about food. Oh, he added that China had to maintain a sense of food insecurity. They also... Uh, uh, 
China's state agency sought to downplay what is called media hype that China was headed for a food crisis made worse by the epidemic. State TV also criticized live streamers who filmed themselves eating large amounts of food. There's also China using facial recognition trash bins to make sure people are recycling. So they get their smart bins. Actually, they reward you, uh, give you credits for exemplary behavior. AI, uh, the World Economic Forum has an AI, AI rubbish bin will help fight food waste at Davos. This was uh, 2020, January. The Keytro's smart food bin records everything that's thrown into it. The camera and AI system provides a detailed picture of waste that owners can act on. It could cut food waste by 40%, according to its makers. It will be in action at the World Economic Forum annual meeting in Davos. Here's your food as medicine stuff. So health and penance of any, for instance, patients will diet will, with diet related disease who are part of the provider's insurance network are given prescriptions by primary care physicians to the network's fresh food pharmacies, FFF your six six six. Primarily or preliminary uh, results indicate these interventions can be more uh, effective than drug treatments. There is increased interest within the healthcare sector and among food community among communities for greater integration of food as a medicine interventions such as medically tailored meals and produced produce prescriptions with the aim to nourish people in order to strengthen us against disease uh, elevation of nutrition requires reaching an agreed definition of a healthy diet investing in nutrition research they will uh by point probably change the definition of the healthy diet uh, could include the coverage of healthy food Medicaid Medicare plans for those struggling with nutrition and security linking together our food system and a health system can save both lives and money and better protect against food pan future pandemics so yeah so then their second shift was the uh, reinvigoration Reinvigorated regional systems. This is important. This has a lot to do with that Toronto refrigerator community thing. The resilience of supply chains will be strengthened in local systems. Direct purchasing power of large institutions along a value-based, equitable, ethical, uh, sustainable supply chain. Now... It seems to me that they really want to shift the supply chains to a local level. Here it says, harnessing the capacity of local and regional food systems, including the including their shorter supply chains, can reduce transportation costs and environmental impacts and increase the flexibility and resilience of our food system overall and its ability to respond to shocks like COVID-19. Such regionalization, when intentionally and properly structured, can facilitate strong, equitable relationships between producers, pr processors, buyers, and consumers. Similarly, local and regional food systems must be inten intentionally organized to encourage greater environmental sustainability to achieve that goal. Here in my city, and they're definitely working on this. The environment, or sorry, the Edmonton Metropolitan Regional Board, 13 Yag Metro municipalities planning without boundaries, as standing as one region and speaking with one voice for a vibrant and prosperous regional future. Oh, it's glorious. Don Iveson up there is the mayor. So he liked it. He's part of it, of course. We know there's a better way to grow, invest, and deliver the services citizens need at a value they expect, and it starts with regional collaboration. We are stronger together. That's stronger together logo or slogan. The Edmonton region, uh, metropolitan region by the numbers. Got to get 33% there, of course. Here's a gross video that they have about reimagine, plan, build. The regional system for Edmonton and the surrounding municipalities. 
Objectives is to conserve adequate supply for local food security. This is a very important goal of theirs cause, because it's if you want to build a mega city and you want to keep that population in there, you're going to have to feed that population. So how they're doing it is this is the city of Edmonton and all this green stuff is rural land. So you'll have all this, this this whole green shape is the region, and you've got your several municipalities here. Uh, these little blurry little words are other municipalities. Edmonton's the biggest one here. St. Albert is Sherwood Park are two fairly big ones, not nearly as big. Fort Saskatchewan, 13 in total. And then all the green stuff is the r rural area, so because they will need farmland, but then that's the whole region. That whole area is one thing, and then uh, I haven't uh, mapped out the other one in Alberta. I believe another one would be uh, the city of Calgary and whatever municipalities they might be linked up with. Something I will definitely get to uh, get a, do some research on and get that put together so I could show the regions in Canada because there's going to be, you know, every province will be broken up into mega regions. But anyways, they need their farmland for a farming supply. Then they'll have lots of uh, vertical farms and stuff like that for their inner growing and then they will push for community gardens too and then what they will do and I've explained this in the past but I always like to reiterate it because um, it's important to understand the system that they're doing they're building the, the food system that's why we're having a lot of food shortage issues coming uh they're already happening in other areas but they will hit us here we will get a taste of it eventually either uh late later this year or maybe in tw the year 2022 when uh the movie so and green came out so or it was based in not when it came out but what it's the year it's set in anyways so in each region we in the say okay in my city my city they want to do the 15 minute communities they call it and this is not just my city i've seen a video of france some some area like france talking to some guy on a ted talk some french guy talking about their 15 minute community thing so it's like a one of their things their little propaganda thing so anyways the 50 minute communities each community so it's broken up i believe into 12 districts in my city is the plan and each district a 15 minute community means that you will be able to in your or is it 11 it might be 11 community districts 11 or 12 each community will be broken up and the idea is that each community you'll be able to access everything you need within a 15 minute uh, like anywhere you can reach anything within the 15 minute time frame or whatever you can get you by bike or walking or public transportation they don't mention cars because they don't want you driving cars it was, but the creepiest part of it is each community, each district, will be um, connected through one corridor. I Meaning you can't get out of that district any other way but through that one corridor to the next. Each district will be cut off. This is very Hunger Games-ish. These districts... Anyways, there's only one corridor you're going to be able to access it. And each each community, 
the whole food thing is each community will have their local food hub, maybe one or two. I don't know. Maybe there'll be more than that. I'm not sure, but there'll be food hubs. That will these will replace grocery stores. There won't be grocery stores anymore. That is going away in the future. Or at least they'll turn them into food hubs. Uh, so they'll have the food hubs. Those will be called. Those are the lo local food hubs. That's where the people in the community will get them. Food will come in. Uh, will be supplied from the regional food hubs. These are the. This is the greater food hub. It's more like a. Where the, where the farm land, farms produce produce will come into that those systems, and then from there we'll feed. They'll be delivered out to the local food hubs. So it's all very tightly controlled that way. And then yeah, whatever produced in the city too will feed right into the local food hub. And that's their plan for feeding uh, whatever population that they want to contain in the region. But anyways, yeah, it's very uh, creepy. It's also, that exact plan is in Plandopolis. I believe it's... The Mega City is on the move. It's Plandopolis is one of four scenarios. The scenario that that is in is in, called Communicity. Communicity. That is... Uh, they have the districts or whatever, the communities. Uh, in one part of that community, there was um, the V, the character that does you, your, uh, gives you the, the tour kind of thing. She talks about how there, there's a referendum or, or voting, the community is voting on whether or not to make a deal with this other district. Uh, because they have laborers or whatever, labor city or something like that, labor town. Anyway, it's very weird, but that's kind of where they're taking it, at least in my area. Uh, I think that's probably similar in, in most areas. I definitely know France is talking about that, get the 15-minute communities. But uh, definitely, they're going to have food hubs. So, resilient food and agriculture system. They've been working on it for a long time. There's the November 2012 Fresh Edmonton's Food and Urban Agriculture Strategy. And they even had a contest, and this group won the, for their food hub design, and this is what the food hub would kind of look like at least for this group called Food for Good. Be like your little marketplace there. And then they'd even have some growing on the top, some garden stuff. Yeah, what joy. Uh, it wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't so... Yeah, what happened? What? Oh, they took... Oh, they took that Rosa Quarry video down. That's too bad. I thought I had it on BitChute. Oh, well. She's just talking about the Food Hub stuff. Basically what I was just telling you about, so... Whatever. It's too bad. Uh, oh, yeah, this is all pre predicted by, in the New Order of Barbarians. Food control. This is an excerpt from the tapes. Food supplies would come under tight control. If population growth didn't slow down, food shortages could be created in a hurry, and people would realize the dangers of overpopulation. Ultimately, whether the population slows down or not, the food su supply is to be brought under centralized control so that people would have enough to be well-nourished, but they would not have enough to support any fugitive from the new system. In other words, if you had a friend or relative who didn't sign on, tape ends abruptly and continues on side two. 
Growing one's own food would be outlawed. This would be done under some sort of pretext in the beginning, I mentioned. There were two purposes for everything. One is one the ostensible purpose and one the real purpose. And the ostensible purpose here would be that growing your own vegetables wasn't safe, that it would spread disease or something like that. So the acceptable idea was to protect the consumer, but the real idea was to limit the food supply. Therefore, growing your own food would be illegal, and if you persist in illegal activities like growing your own food, then you're a criminal. <clears throat> so yeah, that's something to kind of think about. And of course, I had some articles included about a man poisoned by homegrown food. Uh, amateur regard a reported having worst illness he ever had. And then um, another one. There's there was a couple. Killer corgets. Uh, how hundreds of gardeners have been poisoned in recent months. And then there was the whole seed thing with the China seeds. Which actually resulted in Amazon banning the sales of foreign seeds to the U.S. Or in the U.S. So you can no longer get them on Amazon. And then, of course, they always talk about outbreaks on local farms. And there's a lot more to that. And your third shift, equitable prosperity throughout the supply chain. Immediate actions we need to take. OSHA must set and enforce mandatory guidelines to keep workers in the food supply safe. Provide credit, loaning services, and debt relief for farmers and ranchers. And third, increase prosperity of farmers, ranchers, and fishers by more equitably distributing risk and profit. Equitable is another of one of those words that has put a sickening pit into the bottom of my stomach. From reading, hearing it so much lately, I have done, I have nothing against equality and being fair to others. But yet, again, when the new world order is in charge of such an idea, it's not to make everyone's lives better. It's actually to diminish and disqualify those who are white, <laughs> basically, <laughs> while giving biased advantages to those who meet the right parameters for minority and will be given special treatment. It's true because that is exactly what it called for in the Rockefeller uh, PDF. Here it is. Promoting small and mid-size and by BIPOC producers. That's the black, indigenous, people of color, producers, distributors, and processors, uh, balance the balance of aligning food safety regulations to support diversity among producers, processing facilities, and distribution, including specially, specifically uh, small and medium-sized operations need to ensure producers, processors, and distributors with an international uh, BIPOC focus can exercise the choice to stay on their land and keep their businesses, including transitioning from leasing to owning land. This likely requires grants and may also require additional debt, credit, working capital, and equity design specifically within, with underrepresented populations in mind. And, yet the food system's evolution had consequences. The Great Revolu Green Revolution, here's where they uh, admit they, they were responsible for, you know, all the bad health as a result of freaking poison food and stuff like that. So here's the Rockefeller admitting that they were part of that. The Green Re Revolution, which the Rockefeller Foundation played a role in seeding and scaling, was effective and successful in addressing calorie calorie-based hunger and inverting mass starvation, but it left a legacy we can we see clearly today. <clears throat> 
that overemphasis of staple grains at the expense of more nutrient-rich foods, reliance on chemical fertilizers, fertilizers that deplete the soil, and overuse of use of water. The U.S. food system's very specific kind of efficiency has also brought rigidity, rigidity, and costly impacts on human and environmental health. It's all alongside, a lot. Sorry, my tongue is just turning to rubber now. Alongside high levels of wasted food. Disparities in access to healthy food and lack of affordability of nutritious food compared to less uh, healthy alternatives were outcomes of where agricultural subsidies and sports were targeted and where research and development dollars were spent. Poor nutrition. And then there was uh, this food bill. Food Supply Protection Act of 2020. <clears throat> a bill to protect the continuity of the food supply chain of the United States in response to COVID-19 and other purposes. Purposes. The purposes of this action are to reduce food waste by supporting the distri distribution of perishable foods that would otherwise go to waste or by or be left har unharvested to produce food and meals for individuals to need the COVID-19 emergency. Now, remember, they were shutting down farms and restaurants, which... Uh, farms sell to so a lot of farms couldn't even uh, they couldn't harvest because they couldn't sell the food so then when that happened <coughs> we had these uh, the government here the US government making deals with uh, um, food charities which then would come and recover that and then they would uh, use that to donate the food so there was that whole thing. And yeah, there's the yada yada yada. And there they've been stockpiling. I talked all about this before. There's a whole stadium food stocking stocked up food. Government's been stocking for a long time. They've even like while they were discouraging everyone to not create their pandemic cupboards or pantries, they call them pandemic pantries, so don't stock up on food. While they were saying that in the media, people, they were stocking up themselves <clears throat> so that they would have all the... Because they know that they need to get ahead of that because they're going to have a lot of people who need food. And yeah, it just keeps going on. I made a gigantic article. I wasn't trying to go through the whole thing. This even ties back to the to uh to the Nazis too. I mean, they had similar stuff. They pushed eating uh local regionally regionally produced food and eating less meat. The food that grows from German soil, they wanted you to eat locally. There's nothing wrong with eating locally. I just don't trust what they're building here, obviously. If it's going to happen, it would have to be me agreeing with my neighbors to do this thing on our own terms, having an equal distribution kind of thing in the community in, on my, in my neighborhood kind of thing, not anything built by government systems. Uh, some, but not all, U.S. metro areas could grow all needed food locally, estimated estimate study. Researchers estimate potential for locally sourced food based on land needs to, for different diets. This was September 14th of 2020. And they said the eastern seaboard and southwest corner of U.S. would have least potential for localization. Uh, diets with less than half the current consumption of meat supported similar levels of localization potential, whether omnivore or vegetarian. Consumption of meat, beef, pork, blah, 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 baseline. Typical American standard diet was estimated at roughly 5 ounces per day. This would be different from ways to do it. Imagine if we could cut back to fewer than 2 and half ounces per day by serving smaller portions of meat and replacing some meat-centric entrees with plant-based alternatives like lentils, beans, and nuts. See, that's actual produce. If it's like, like, I love black bean burgers. I think black bean burgers are amazing. It's whole food. You take a natural thing you grow, and you 
mash it up or whatever, add some ingredients, all natural stuff, you know, from whole plants, and you have a delicious burger you can make out of a patty kind of shaped thing. It's not hamburger, no, but it's tasty and uh, it goes nice in a hamburger bun, so at least you're eating something real, not the synthetic meat crap like at the Impossible Burger and stuff like that. So I don't have a problem with that. More diverse sources of protein could open new possibilities for local food. Nutrition research tells us there could be some new, some health benefits too, uh, said corresponding author Julie Kurtz. Why would they have a study like this? Is there a plan to localize all food sources? Well, yes, there is. Under the old diet scenarios, the model projected the United States having surplus of land for meeting domestic food needs in the current American agriculture system. Some farmland is used for biofuels and export crops. The researchers point out that if metro centers focus on eating locally, many agriculture areas would face new questions about local land use priorities. Um, and I got my meme here. What's on the menu this month? No, not meat. It's not your birthday. That's from Plantopolis. And yada, yada, yada. Oh, yeah. I went on more about the German government during the Nazi time. Just very much, there's still, there were still similarities there. And I just don't want to keep. I don't want to get stuck on reading this whole thing. So I'm just going to skip through. Oh, so yeah. Celebrities documented proof that the celebrities were being used to push plant-based. This is obvious for everyone. Regional environmental change. Reducing meat consumption developed and transitioned countries to counter climate change and biodiversity loss. Review of influence factors. And yeah, they used all sorts of characters. And then you get your 3D foods. That's a big part of the future. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to see it eventually be on your countertops. Your food will be printed to you. So get your uh, little meat gel pack and or ink pack sent delivered to you with the Amazon drone, and you'll be eating your burgers in no time. <laughs> in, say, six minutes. According to this Savor Eat uh, company, which developed an automated closed system that the 3D prints and cooks plant based meat alternatives for food services, this robot can replace manufacturing practices. A robot for food services that appears to do it all personalized and 3D, personalized and 3D print plant based meat alternatives before grilling them according to your cooking preference, all within six minutes. Savor Eats. Or Savor Eat has teamed up with Israeli burger chain Burgers Burgers Bar or Burgess Burger Bar, BBB, and plans to set up a pilot in their facility within a year, making Israel the first country to bring 3D printed food to the masses. Um, yada, 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 which sought to recreate meat from meat waste products. Originally, we're doing it for meat res products, but that was not friendly enough, so they had to switch to plant based. Based. Synthetic. Uh, she recalled, but we need to move to the concept to meat products, blah, blah, blah. And then in the future, it will be no longer. It will. In the future, it will no longer be purely about mimicking the taste and texture of meat. She explained it. We are about personalization. That is, uh, that is where it's going. And I will get to that in a moment. So here's their cartridges that store at room temperature for up to six months without the need for refrigeration. Creepy. We are skipping the entrees process of transportation and refrigeration with no human touch. Touchless food. This robot becomes a mini manufacturer at your facility. So this is just on the restaurant level. It's very much a Star Trek kind of thing. And they even references reference that in this article here. 3D printers are finally starting to work more like Star Trek's replicators. 
another video that no longer works. The frick, what the frick, man? Oh. Oh, I know why. I think I, this was my video. Either it got removed or I deleted it. Because I was going to put it up somewhere else. Uh, yeah, this is the, this is the one I was getting to next. That's why I don't have to jump to that article. This will be easier. So this group called Rethink X. In 2019, I wrote it, I covered this uh, story that came out in 2019, just before all the shit hit the fan there. A group called Rethink X, they put out a report. And it was the great protein disruption. How, uh, uh, what was it? So I just want to see what. Is that it? Will it take me to it? I can't remember what the headline was. And it kind of bothers me. Do I have a picture of the headline? Surely I do. The writing is on the wall. The coming collapse of the livestock industry. Anyways, I'll just go to the more, the main pictures. So. From 2012 to 2023, the cost of protein in the U.S. from cows versus precision biology food technology will reach parity, says independent think tank Rethink X. It will be a tipping point after which acceptance of modern foods will accelerate quickly, leaving the cattle industry effectively bankrupt by 2030 and five years later down to 10% of its current size. Rethink X start, starting... Starling, Starling predictions are published in a report released September 16th titled Rethinking Food and Agriculture 2020 to 2030, the second domestication of plants and animals, the disruption of the cow, and the collapse of industrial livestock farming. The ramifications, the group says, will be profound, far-reaching, and overwhelmingly positive, affecting people everywhere in some things are about to change big time. Oh, they called it all right. Building better food. Building better food. Microorganisms are at the heart of the upcoming disruption. They were when humanity began domesticating plants and animals 10,000 years ago by man manipulating the evolution of microorganisms via the breeding of their macroorganisms. Organisms. Within about a thousand years, we were controlling microorganisms through fermentation, producing bread, uh, cheese, alcohol, preserving our fruits and vegetables. This protein disruption will be followed by the collapse of a wide range of related and supported industries, industries by 2035. It will be, according to the researchers, the deepest, fastest, most consequential disruption in food and agriculture production since the first domestication of plants and animals 10,000 years ago. And so things have basically stood for thousands of years, harvesting the nutrients of which we depend through the time and cost intensive breeding and extracting and consuming of the macroorganisms organisms in which or microorganisms reside. It's the macroorganisms organisms it's though, uh, though that we really are after. They're the specific source of the nutrients we seek in today, and sorry, we have tools. Whoa, it just moved on its own. We have tools for directly accessing them. Unplugged from the macroorganisms, we can build nutrients, nutrients ourselves, programming complex molecules using precision fermentation. Rethink X says each ingredient will serve a specific purpose, allowing us to create foods with the exact attributes we desire in terms of nutritional profile, structure, taste, texture, functional qualities, even better. The report predicts that future food will be more nutritious, tastier, and more convenient with much greater variety. 
Rethink X coins the term for a worldwide information pap- informational platform serving food, future food production, food as software. It consists of database of engineered molecules, molecular cookbooks, if you will, that allow for decentralized, stable, and resilient production and production anywhere. Rethink X cities, uh, fermentation farms. So cities, fermentation farms, even in densely populated areas, will be provide a means for the continual reiteration and perfection of food molecules. Will also signify a more a move from a centralized system dependent on scarce resources to a distributed system based on abundant resources. Oh man, your food is going to be programmed. Um, there's actually a bit of predictive programming in the movie The Sixth Day, right in the beginning. When uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger comes, uh, gets up in the morning, whatever, and there's a commercial on the TV about cloning your pet or whatever, and he goes to the, you know, gets his coffee or whatever, and he sits at the table, and his daughter, you know, walks up to him and offers him bananas, and she's like, "Which do you want, uh, nacho or original? <laughs> nacho banana? Not even kidding." That's your uh, uh, softest food. Uh, food is software. Softest foodware. I was gonna say, food is software. That's that's a programmed food. A nacho flavored banana. No doubt it was three D printed. And then yeah, here's the WDF wants to spark an indoor food re- farming revolution. Of course, we'll have insects farms and all that stuff. Everything. All these things will be used in order to may, uh, be able to feed a mega city population. That's what it's all about. Is they're trying to uh, eliminate all that need for land. So they're going to use molecules. And now when I think about it, remember in the, uh, in the movie Idiocracy, there's a scene where this lady's trying to order from like a vending machine carl's jr kind of like vending machine thing and uh and there's like a and like a screen advertising their products and one of them's the extra big ass taco now with more molecules and just that kind of terminology like it clicked into my head molecules And that's exactly what they were talking about. Engineered molecules, molecular cookbooks. Kind of almost like a hint there, now that I think about it. But anyways, yeah, they want to push for indoor gardens or whatever, indoor farming, blah, blah, blah. Oh, wait. Either a single farm or a network of farms that can be built in the city by 2021. That's this year. This will help with their extreme weather outside because of climate change. <clears throat> Technologies such as automation, which can help bring down the cost of growing labor, is a major expense at the indoor farms, and robots can help address that. So, yeah, they'll have those. So, they actually have uh, automated uh, machines uh, at Cargo now to reduce the risk of COVID. All right, I said the dreaded C word. Outbreaks in uh, the migrant workers that work at their facilities. Uh, don't worry, the robots can do the meat cutting now. Until that's phased out and it's all plant-based. Or, you know, synthetic uh, meat grown in uh, the bioreactors. And then we have the IMF... Uh, Saying that there's a, they expect a f- hunger pandemic. Ooh. Lovely. Hunger pandemic, this is quotation, hunger pandemic and doubling of people starving may soon eclipse the coronavirus. Uh, 
this to make this happen agencies like food agriculture blah 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 they have a whole plan there to address it and then you got your mega regions this is um, like similar to that wildlands project map this one's in america 2050 the website's completely different now so it won't look like this fortunately i had this <clears throat> screenshot and forever preserved in my steam it so or slash high blog so suck it in america 2050 i've got your photo right here this is their mega cities um just so you know the scale here The small circle is 1 million. The next ring is 1 to 3 million. The ring after that is 3 to 6 million. Um, sorry, the middle ring is 150,000 to a million. And then the outer ring is 6 million plus. These are metro area populations. These are going to be gigantic cities. So you got a few giant ones. Like in New York, that'd be a, uh, because New York has 10 million, right? So there you have a large mega city, but you'll have more concentrated areas or cities, and a lot less population, populated areas thereafter. That's by 2050, and yeah, so that's that. Do I think I had anything else? Oh wait, was there one more thing? Is it in here? Oh yeah, yes. I wanted to show. Oh, where where am I now? What's going on here? I'm scrolling too fast. Doesn't like it. I just want to wrap this up because I am over an hour now, almost an hour and a half. I'll wrap it up in a couple minutes here. So the Rockefeller Foundation joined up with uh, the Eat Lancet. Reimagining food systems. So they... Uh, I'm just going to find it. A lot of, you know, similar material in here from the previous one I was showing you. Because, you know, it all ties in together. you got to show it all together. This whole article was just talking about syndemic. And, yeah, I don't want to get into that because that's taboo topics for YouTube at this point. But I can still talk about food. So the Food Planet Health was a uh, guide put out by a Lancet Commission, I think. Might have been a year or two ago. And they talk about, look at this. You got your Ouroboros. Am I saying that right? Ouroboros. I just got the mixed up. Food system here. Look at that. You can't see my finger tracing it. <laughs> I'm tracing it with my finger like you could see it. Anyways, yeah. And that's actually uh, the symbol on goal 12 of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Goal 12 has the Ouroboros. Here's their... Uh, their I don't know what you call this figure. Scientific targets define the safe operating space for food systems and are represented here by the orange ring. The, we the wedges represent either dietary patterns or food production, and together they reflect various dietary patterns that may or may not meet scientific targets for human health and environmental sustainability, i.e. outside of the safe operating space. These dietary patterns can be healthy and un and unsustainable, win-lose. Unhealthy and sustainable, lose-win. Unhealthy and sustainable, lose-lose. And healthy and sustainable, win-win. So let's look at the lose-lose and the win-win. So lose-lose, you got this big old chunk. The 
land and sea being harvested or whatnot. And in your win-win, just a little tiny bit and a lot of untouched land and water. So, oh, yeah, healthy targets, your diets. Let's go in the meat section here. We have micronutrients intake grams per day. Enjoy 14 grams of beef today er, per day. Mmm. Caloric intake calorie per day is 30 grams or 30 calories of beef a day. Or you could just do like uh where is it? Do I even have it in here? What is that article? Anyways, I made a video talking about where oh, I passed it. It was about this turd over here. Walter Willett. He was saying when he was talking about the food guide here. He said, um, you could have your little micro burgers each day or whatever, or you could, uh, like, uh, what was it, the Mediterranean diet he was talking about? It was very common to have meat only once in a while, and he said, like, on your birthday, and that was like, ding, ding, in my head, because that was right out of Plant Opolis, uh, Plant Opolis about it's not your birthday. You can't have meat. It's not your birthday. Yeah. Oh, 